AMD has evolved their extremely popular Ryzen line of processors into a new chipset, new socket, and an entirely new line of motherboards. X670 is here, and consumers now have more choices than ever when building with a new 7000 series processor. Today we're going to go over a bunch of new motherboards from the crazy high end all the way down to budget options to help you decide on what's right for you. Meet the Silent Wings Pro 4, the latest in the legendary line of silent, high-performing fans from Be Quiet. Available in 120 or 140 millimeter sizes and with a high speed option, the Silent Wings Pro 4 provide next level cooling performance for your system using their optimized fan blade design and virtually inaudible operation. And with a 300,000 hour lifespan and five year warranty, these things are built to last. Check out the link below for more information. Thanks so much for stopping in and checking out the slightly delayed X670 motherboard roundup. I generally do this for every new processor generation, but this time around took a little bit longer than normal just due to the absolutely insane amount of recent launches bunched up into the last month or month and a half. But hopefully this isn't too late to help out both now and for the next few years while X670 is still relevant. Now, you'll notice that I did specifically say X670 and not AM5. AM5 will continue to evolve over time and we've already seen the release of B650 boards that can handle these same processors as X670, albeit with fewer PCIe lanes, USB ports, and a slightly cut down feature set. With that being said, a lot of people still will opt for the B650 version simply due to cost. So if that's your jam, stay tuned to the channel as I'll be trying to put together a B650 roundup in the near future. So why was X670 and the new AM5 socket needed? Well, this time around, AMD had migrated away from their long-standing tradition of using PGA processors, meaning that the pins are no longer on the CPU, rather they're in the motherboard socket. This does mean that you will need to treat your motherboards with slightly more care, as bending one of these pins here can be hugely problematic and hard to repair. But this has allowed AMD to bring more features and more power to this generation. And across the board, we see things like PCIe 5 for both storage and add-in cards, Wi-Fi 6E connectivity, 44 PCIe lanes, and increased power delivery capacity. Today, we'll be looking at seven examples of X670 motherboards with ranging prices from $250 all the way up to $700 for the Aorus Extreme. While there are, of course, other choices on the market, and I can't possibly demo all of them for you, this at least will give you an idea of what to expect at any given price point. Do keep in mind, though, that the cheapest X670 motherboard on the market will still cost you over $200. So if you're upgrading platforms this time around, you might need to save up a few extra pennies. First up is the cheapest motherboard that I could find on Amazon, Newegg, or at Micro Center, and that's the ASRock X670E PG Lightning. The E at the end of the X670 name represents not only another digit to trip over while trying to remember the name, but also that AMD has bestowed extra PCIe 5.0 lanes coming off of the processor. It generally won't make a huge difference to most, but if you're keen on getting the fastest performance out of your storage, X670E might treat you better than X670. The Lightning clocks in at $259 and features a 17 phase power delivery system cooled by a fairly basic heatsink design. Memory support here is up to DDR5-6600, which is another thing to keep in mind. Ryzen 7000 and AM5 support DDR5 exclusively, so if you plan on upgrading, you'll need to factor in the cost of new memory as well for the first time since maybe about 2015. There are four total M.2 slots with one being Gen 5, two being Gen 4x4, and one being Gen 4x2. The PCIe slots feature one 16x Gen 5, two 16x Gen 4, and one 1x Gen 4. The rear I.O. actually has quite a good amount of connectivity with 12 total USB ports, but this is the only motherboard here that doesn't support Wi-Fi. There is a 2.5 gig LAN port as well as HDMI, DisplayPort, and BIOS flashback. There is no onboard power or reset switch and no LED postcode readout. I left a special section at the end of each board in my script here to discuss their special features and the ASRock really just doesn't have any, it's pretty basic. 
Moving up a price tier to $289, we find the MSI Pro X670P Wi-Fi. Now this is the only board here that isn't X670E, and it's also the only board here lacking features like a built-in IO shield, which is just kind of industry standard at this point in the timeline. You again get a 17 phase power delivery system and a fairly bog standard heatsink design with memory support up to DDR5-6600. There are four M.2 slots with one being Gen 5 and three being Gen 4. The top two PCIe slots are both PCIe 4x16, so you don't get PCIe Gen 5 here. The rear IO has eight total USB ports, 2.5 gig LAN, HDMI, DisplayPort, Wi-Fi 6E, and a BIOS flashback button. Again, I have no special features to discuss and the board doesn't have onboard power or reset switches or an LED postcode readout. Overall, I would say that just comparing the MSI board to the less expensive ASRock Lightning, the ASRock seems to be the better deal at the low end unless you absolutely have to have Wi-Fi. The Lightning has a built-in IO shield, more USB ports, an extra PCIe slot, and it's cheaper. Let's keep climbing the price ladder though, up to $329 and the ASUS TUF Gaming X670E Plus Wi-Fi and I will tell you that as the names get longer, I get less tolerance of them. I am a little disappointed in the power delivery on this board as though the heatsink does appear to be of higher quality than the lower end ones that we've looked at so far as it's pretty heavy and it's separated for better airflow pathways. There are only 16 total 70 amp power stages. For reference, most of the other boards here use 105 amp power stages or better. Granted, this isn't the be all end all and component quality matters a great deal, but it is a little disappointing to see. Memory support here is a fairly standard DDR5-6400 and you get four total M.2 slots for storage with one of them being Gen 5, two of them being Gen 4 and one of them being Gen 3. Again, we see no onboard power switches and no LED postcode readout, but Asus does have a neat trick up their sleeve with their M.2 Q latch system, which allows toolless installation of M.2 drives, AKA no screw required. The rear IO has 10 total USB ports, a 2.5 gig LAN, Wi-Fi 6E, HDMI display port, and a BIOS flashback button. Although this tough board does feel pretty well built, I can't help but go back to the ASRock Lightning as perhaps a better value at a lower price, especially if you are considering a six core Ryzen CPU where VRM overheating shouldn't really be an issue. There aren't a whole lot of intermediate steps here as from $329, we make a mighty leap up to the $479 MSI MPG X670E Carbon Wi-Fi. We do get a significant jump in build quality here, as well as a lot of features that were missing off of the lower end boards. The Carbon has a 21 phase VRM with an extended heatsink and heat pipe for more even and efficient cooling, meaning that using it with even the 16 core 7950X shouldn't be a problem. There are four total M.2 slots evenly split between Gen 4 and Gen 5, and there are also two PCIe Gen 5 expansion slots in addition to the single Gen 4 slot at the bottom. We again see DDR5-6400 as the top officially supported memory spec, and for the first time we see the inclusion of an LED postcode readout instead of just simple LED debug lights, which can prove hugely valuable while troubleshooting. There is also an onboard reset switch, sort of. Let's look at the IO, which features MSI's smart button, which can be mapped to a bunch of different features, one of them being a reset switch. So this kind of qualifies as being on board, I guess. Back here, there are also 10 total USB, a 2.5 gig LAN port, HDMI display port, Wi-Fi 6E, a clear CMOS button, and a BIOS flashback button. The Carbon also comes with extra M.2 heat sinks and thermal pads in the box, and has the same kind of screwless M.2 installation that we saw on the ASUS Tough. If you've got another $20 in your pocket, maybe you should consider the ASUS ROG Strix X670EE Gaming Wi-Fi for $499. Yes, they really named it that. The Strix board again jumps up in quality and features, and let's just start there with ASUS's PCIe Q-Latch system. We saw this last year on some Intel boards, and it's maybe the best new feature that I've seen in a while. There is a small button on the right side of the board that connects to the top PCIe slot latch. When pressed, it simply releases the latch, allowing you to extract your GPU without tearing up your fingers, trying to press the tiny exposed bit of plastic. 
I love it and I'd probably pay $499 for it just alone as somebody who switches over the graphics cards constantly. The power delivery here is way better than on the Tough, as we get an 18 plus two phase design using 110 amp power stages. The VRM heatsink is also heavier and more substantial with two separate heatsinks connected by a heat pipe flanking the CPU socket. There are three PCIe Gen 5 M.2 slots and one Gen 4 slot, as well as two PCIe Gen 5 expansion slots. At this price point, not having onboard power and reset would be a crime, and we indeed do see that present with a chunky start button at the top right. Memory support is DDR5 6400 and the rear IO is pretty stacked with 13 total USB ports, the most in our group today. There's also 2.5 gig LAN, Wi-Fi 6E, HDMI, DisplayPort, clear CMOS and a BIOS flashback button. Rounding out our sub $500 motherboards and coming in at the same price as the Strix is the $499 ASRock X670E Tai Chi, featuring a monstrous 27 phase VRM using 105 amp power stages. The Tai Chi has proven itself to be a very capable overclocking board. Gamers Nexus has used it to overclock a 7950X to 6.2 gigahertz on LN2, which is pretty crazy. Memory support here is also bumped up to DDR5 6600. So maybe ASRock was going for pure performance because there are a few other features that are lacking versus the competing Strix. First of all, even though there are four M.2 slots, only one of them operates at Gen 5 speeds. Secondly, there are only two PCIe expansion slots in total. And although this isn't an issue for most people, especially since SLI is dead, you still have things like capture cards and sound cards that often do need a home. Also, the rear IO is trimmed down as there are only 10 total USB ports. You also get the standard 2.5 gig LAN, Wi-Fi 6E, Claire CMOS, and BIOS flashback buttons. Display output is limited to HDMI, but I don't think that's a huge issue. The VRM heatsink is a composite material with a heat pipe and an active fan underneath the IO cover that is slightly audible at times. The rear of the board has thermal armor, which I really have yet to fully understand the purpose of besides preventing the PCB from accidentally flexing or bending somehow. You do get onboard power and reset switches along with an LED postcode readout, but I'd say that the Strix board is probably a better value at $500, and that's a weird thing to say, just for the average consumer, it just has more features. Neither the Strix nor the Tai Chi will have any issue running any AM5 CPU you throw at them, and the Strix just has more features and in my opinion is also a better looking board. Not to mention that Asus has by far the better BIOS experience. If you want to go Sub-Zero though, the Tai Chi might be the better option, but the Strix wins out overall for me. And now let's talk about this monster, the Gigabyte X670E RS Extreme. At $699, it better do everything better than everybody else on this list. And it, it pretty much does, except for the USB ports, and I guess we'll start there. You do only get 12 here instead of the 13 on the Strix, but 12 is still a really good number. So back here, you also get a 10 gig LAN port, which isn't easy to find on any motherboard anywhere. You also have your other standard connections like Wi-Fi 6E, display outputs, and BIOS flashback. The front of the Aorus Extreme is adorned with all kinds of cool finishes and touches that make it really unique. The aesthetics of this board really do speak to me. I'm not really sure why, but I do love the little different textured patterns everywhere. You also get a load of special features that we didn't see on any of the other boards, like external voltage readout points, an included USB DAC for improved audio performance, a noise detection port, as well as their version of the ASUS PCIe latch release system. The M.2 drives are also toolless, and the rear has some of the heaviest armor that I've ever seen or felt, contributing to the massive weight. Also contributing to the weight is the nano carbon coated individually finned heatsink design over the VRM, which is a 22 phase design using 105 amp power stages. The memory support goes up to a devilish 6,666 megahertz, the highest in our group. You get four M.2 slots, all operating at gen five speeds and three PCIe slots for expansion. Overall, quite the package for quite the chunk of change. 
So for your money, which X670 motherboard fits your use case? Would you prefer to go with B650 instead to save some money? Let me know down below in the comments. Also leave a list of your dream X670 build. I'm interested to see what kind of component choices people make. As always guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.